Madam Speaker, I wish to thank you for your statement on behalf of the Parliament and to join you, Madam Speaker, in expressing the outrage of the Parliament at what we had seen and to condemn unequivocally violence against women, violence against our children, and violence generally in our society. <laughs> Madam Speaker, like all well-thinking Jamaicans who saw the viral video circulated, I was outraged at the display of violence. Subsequent allegations that a person captured in the video is a member of parliament placed a new disturbing dimension to the issue. While every citizen, every community leader, every civic leader, every civic organization, every national organization, every one of us, have a duty and must play their part and speak loudly and unequivocally against violence. We who sit in this honorable house, elected and appointed to make laws, policies, and indeed the budget for the people, have a higher duty to exemplify the laws of the land and the policies which we espouse and advocate. If we are not seen as exemplifying the law and believing in what we preach, our electorate and the wider society will not take us seriously. And worse, they will not trust us. This in an already low trust environment. The allegations made against the member, though unproven, are serious and have cast unresolved doubt which could impact the government's credibility in pursuing our long-established anti-violence strategies and policies, particularly as it relates to gender-based violence. Madam Speaker, the office I hold as Prime Minister is a creature of procedure and process. I am not at large to act and say as, as others appear to be. I am bounded by process and procedure. And in all instances where I have been called upon, that's how I've acted. Gone through a process to establish natural justice, what is fair, what is right, what is legal, and then we have acted. I have never used process as an excuse for action, however, my <laughs> And there is, within this debate, a need for our public, in as much as we are outraged, and in as much as we must express condemnation, and in as much the protests and demonstrations that we are seeing a legitimate part of our democracy in expressing our anger and outrage, at the same time, we cannot escape. The leader of the opposition is also an officer of the court. So he more than most would understand and appreciate process and procedure.
if it is that it is understood, but yet the path is still pursued, then we can only say it is a political motivation. And this issue, Madam Speaker, affects both sides of the aisle. It is not a political issue. And if we continue to pursue it as a political issue, leader of the opposition, we will also lose the trust of the people. Which is why it is best, because this is an issue that is affecting the entire House. And we must speak with one clear, unequivocal, unambiguous voice on this matter. But it must be strong. Whenever matters that require action have challenged this administration, more than any other administration, we have acted. We have taken action. There has been consequence. We have never hidden anything, brushed anything under the carpet. We have acted, and we have done it within the boundaries of the law and what is administratively possible. Even where we can't get legal action, Madam Speaker, we have taken administrative action. And whenever anything is within my discretion as Prime Minister, I have used that discretion to set tone and example. Madam Speaker, you have outlined that the member in question is now separate from the government caucus and has taken a leave of absence from this house. It is time that should be used well to resolve doubts and questions. What must be patently clear to the public is that the government does not want its credibility and leadership of the cultural and social revolution that is necessary in rejecting the use of violence as a means of resolving conflict to be impaired. While there are those who would want to see more action, and in instances justifiably so that would symbolize severe punishment i'm sure that on reflection we recognize that we can only go as far as the law allows us as parliamentarians we make the law and so we also have a duty to look at the law and determine whether or not the law goes far enough.